your stories don't define you, how you tell them will. Hi, I'm Sarah Elkins, your host and chief story maker of Elkins Consulting. Many of my clients reach out to me because they're in transition. Their children are hitting milestone ages. They want more from their work. They're hitting a big number birthday. And they want to develop clarity about their natural strengths, what their next adventure might look like. In this series, you'll hear me ask my guests questions to dig deeply into the stories that shaped their lives, stories that uncover patterns and may unveil insights into dissatisfaction and also where their strengths lie and where they found and continue to find joy. This podcast's intention is to have listeners think of their own related stories and how they tell them, discovering the internal messages that are limiting their success and discovering how to shift their stories so they become positive life lessons to move them forward. If you're curious about what it would be like to work with me, visit elkinsconsulting.com and schedule a one-time 90-minute StrengthsFinder session. Episode 214, Slowing Down Time, The In-Between. Many years ago, I read a post by Neelofer Merchant about what she calls the in-between space. Here's how she describes them. Summers when you were young were the in-between spaces of learning, where you could languish in playtime and know learning time was ahead. That time where you got a job offer but hadn't started yet. Maybe even during the search for a new role. Perhaps it's as simple as when you're clear of a new direction. I think of that post often. I live in in in-between space. It's a weird sort of comfort zone for me. I rarely stay content in a job, a dynamic, a relationship. There has to be consistent growth and change in everything I do. It was in a recent conversation that I realized this about myself, that I'm in a constant state of change and churn, and that I sometimes let that get me anxious or stressed. It's silly. I know I bring this on myself. I could say no. I could turn down opportunities to sing, to speak, to mentor, but I love it. I love this feeling of change and growth, and none of the decisions I make are things I don't want to do. In StrengthsFinder, that's a direct reflection of my activator and adaptability talents. If you're one of those people who struggles in meetings without good facilitation, meetings without a focus on action items, and you find yourself in an almost constant sense of urgency, you may be an activator too. The combination of activator and adaptability means I spend a lot more of my days in transition and a lot fewer of my days in periods of contentedness. For most of my life, that's been a challenge and a disadvantage. You've heard the term job hopper, right? When I was starting my career, that was a seriously negative description. People close to me would voice concern every time I considered changing jobs. That'll look bad on your resume. But for the past nearly three years, this part of my character has been valued, appreciated. People have reached out to me for guidance more than ever before. They know if anyone is going to deal with uncertainty with grace and optimism, it's going to be me or someone like me with adaptability in their top talents, even though they may not know that. I realized a few years ago that though it's not uncommon to find people like me, the majority of people prefer long periods of contentedness and short periods of transition, exactly the opposite to how I live my life. During a recording of Lois Kofi's podcast, Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, Lois asked me about that how those of us with adaptability up there in our talents can deal with all of this uncertainty with grace and those without it, how do they do it? That's where this in-between space reference comes in. For most people, periods of uncertainty are uncomfortable to say the least. Consider though, the time between giving your notice at one job and starting the next one or the time of your wedding engagement between the announcement and the event itself, or pregnancy, or the summer between school years. All of those are in-between spaces full of possibility and uncertainty. My answer to Lois included two strategies. 
your mindset must shift to possibility as opposed to worry. Surround yourself with people who think differently from you, people who have complementary talents. Find an activator, an adaptability partner to bring you comfort simply because they will weather this uncertainty storm with optimism and action. The second strategy, find small routines or habits that bring you a sense of stability and comfort and practice them with intention. When your brain starts to wind up with the negative what ifs, practice looking for things that are certain, things that even if they're not great, are consistent in your life. This is what mindfulness is about, being fully present in the moment. Tell yourself, right now, in this moment, I'm breathing, I'm sitting here with consciousness. This isn't just about gratitude, though that's really helpful in this context. It's about knowing what's certain in a given moment. Here's one of mine. I'm certain that right now, in this moment, I'm safe, I'm warm, I'm not hungry, and my dog is peacefully sleeping beside me. When we acknowledge and value our in-between time, we're able to process a past experience and begin to consider the potential for our future. If you have children or fur babies, It's a great way to slow down time so you don't regret missing out on the limited access we have, the limited years we have to spend with them. When planning our wedding 25 years ago, I kept a journal to document all the details. I knew that by embracing and enjoying each part of the journey, I would slow down the time before the actual wedding day. I also figured that this strategy would help with the emotional letdown following a major event. And it did, because I enjoyed the planning, the conversations, even some of the drama, far before I could actually enjoy the event. To slow down time, I need to stop thinking of each day as stressful or uncertain and stop trying to make something happen every moment. And I need to start thinking about each day as an opportunity to enjoy the journey leading to whatever is next. Are you an in-between space person too? Do you embrace that side of you? Or does it keep you frustrated and anxious? Or are you a contentedness person who needs to find tools to find certainty in your days so that the uncertainty around you doesn't make you crazy? Thank you for listening to the Your Stories Don't Define You podcast. Two announcements at the end of this episode. There are still spots available for the fifth No Longer Virtual Conference coming up March 3rd and 4th, 2022 in Park City, Utah, bringing entrepreneurs and innovators together in a small venue, limited to 40 people, to connect beyond the keyboard, to learn from each other and grow in our personal and professional lives as well as to create a solid, encouraging, supportive network. Visit elkinsconsulting.com for more details and to view the fabulous agenda. If you're facing transition right now, a big birthday coming up, considering a major career change, retiring, empty nesting, divorcing, this would be a good time to start exploring what's out there for you. If you're eager and would appreciate a guide, My recently launched Discovering Clarity course is available now for $149. I highly recommend that you register with a friend or group of friends to keep each other accountable. Message me for a discount code for multiple registrations. Visit elkinsconsulting.com forward slash discovering hyphen clarity. My friend Trent said this to me a few years ago, hope is not a strategy. Instead of, I hope this year is better, say, this year will be better, and then take steps to make it better. In my work, I call it planting seeds. Every day that my motivation drops, I ask myself which seeds I can plant right this minute to improve my future. I make myself choose two seeds, one for future income and one for the health of an important relationship. It's really amazing how much can change by simply taking small steps. 
but nothing will change if you say, I hope 2022 is better than 2021, and then do nothing to make that happen. What seeds will you plant today? Thank you.